we, again, when we sent out the request to join us that, hallelujah, you stopped and start, but now we're learning how to complete. I say complete, somebody say complete your task. That's why we've been learning to dive right in. Hallelujah, we've been getting what, stronger. So tonight, dear ones, we're gonna talk about the objective. Oh, somebody, isn't that good? The objective, amen, because objective really equals goal. And we've been talking about goal. We know now what a goal is. A goal is simply nothing but a dream, something that's a thought in your mind, an idea, a creative pattern, per se. But nevertheless, it's something that should what? Be completed. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to what? Dive right in. I'm excited about that because as you learn, I'm learning. As you're being challenged, I'm being challenged. God, hallelujah, what? His word is like what? A two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. So the same word, oh, somebody, I eat too. And I'm glad about it because God is doing a mighty work within us. And I say within us. That's why he's called Emmanuel. He's with us. He's in us. He's all about us. So tonight, dear ones, let's just pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that, Father, we have come to the realization of completing our goals, completing our task. And now we have a clear objective in terms of the direction that we are going in our lives. We have committed ourselves to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, you should prove thee in this and see that I would not pour us out a blessing that we would not have room, I say, to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So let's talk about that thing. Amen. That thing called a goal. But we're going to call it tonight an objective because we understand we're moving farther with this. We're taking it to a new level, a new plateau. So then let's talk about the objective, hallelujah, of that goal. Hallelujah. The objective then is nothing more than an aim. Hallelujah. It's like you're, you're aiming toward what? The target. You're aiming toward what? The completion. You're aiming toward what? The end. It's an ambition then. You, you must be stirred up in your mind. You must be stirred up in your spirit. You must gain an ambition. And this is what the vision is, isn't it? It's an ambition. And then at the end of that, it has to be a purpose, a purpose. Hallelujah, a purpose. And again, if you are aiming, you're wanting to do what? Hit the target. Hallelujah. So if you can imagine yourself shooting an arrow or even you yourself being that arrow and you're headed toward the target. Oh, somebody, it's an admiration. The admiration, the objective then is to aspire to being more than what you are. The admiration of knowing that you're going to complete, that you're going to be better off in the name of Jesus than you are and then where your current state, no more of the past failures being looked back upon as failures. No, they're just simply a reflection to Hallelujah, propel you to the next great level. And that's what we need to be looking at in our lives. We have to begin to focus about these same things. And I wanted to pour this into you tonight because God is not done with you yet. And we want to all receive everything we can from God. I noticed one thing about when you, we begin to study the word, and we begin to dissect the word. God opens up doors, doesn't he? He opens up new ways for us to accomplish the task that he set before us. Hallelujah. The goals, the objectives that are now before us that we had put aside or we just didn't want to pursue, but now we understand that we can and we can succeed if we simply believe and trust God. We know now that, oh, somebody, I'm excited. We know now that we can do this. Oh, saints of God, I believe that God is going to challenge you to do just that. And I am going to, I'm going to give you something tonight, as always, to help you, to, to show you that I, I too am standing on the same 
principles that I'm giving you. Somebody. And I'm loving every minute of it because it's causing me to be a new creature in Christ. It's causing me to step it up. It's causing me to dive right in, whereas before I, I was afraid of diving in. Come on, somebody, let's get real. But now I'm, I'm all in the deep. Oh, hallelujah, I'm calling deep unto deep because I am diving right in. Hallelujah, I'm, oh, somebody. He told Joshua, he said, be not afraid. Oh, hallelujah. He told the prophet, he says, be not afraid. Hallelujah, for my army, oh, glory to God, is greater than theirs. Oh, hallelujah, isn't that good? Praise the Lord tonight, saints, because God's going to move. He's going to move miraculously, and you need to get ready. Buckle up, as I say, God is speaking. So then, therefore, if we are truly interested and in wanting to achieve this end, oh, somebody completing the task, not just starting and stopping, but completing. We, we bind up the start and the stop spirit. Hallelujah. You know, we want to start and complete the task. We want to be able to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Oh, come hither. Oh, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God tonight, saints. I tell you, the Holy Spirit is moving right now. I need to slow it down, though, because there's something that God wants you to have tonight. First, I want you to do one thing for me. First and foremost, tell the devil he's defeated. Just tell him, say, Pastor, the devil is defeated in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody, oh, that just has released you for ne the next level because the devil now, get thee behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Satan, the Lord thy God, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody, see, when you can move the obstacle out of the way, when you can move the enemy out of the way, you now can begin to soar, as Pastor Darlene would put it, like the eagle. So then, then tell the devil, devil, you're defeated in the name of Jesus, and he is. Let's, you know me, I'm always going to put some scripture to this so that you can have it. Because as you're thinking this, and you're thinking about that aim and that objective, you're thinking about that end. So as you're doing that, we're going to talk about Exodus 9. 13 and 21. Again, that's Exodus 9, 13 and 21. Well, somebody. He says, then the Lord said to Moses, rise up early. Oh, somebody, got to get up. Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh then. Oh, somebody, you got to get up and face that enemy. Come on, somebody, you can't lay there. He says, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. And say to him, oh, somebody, see this? This is why in the morning you need to get up and say, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's waiting for you to bind him. Oh, somebody. Hallelujah. Because if you don't bind him, he's going to be in your way all day long. Oh, hallelujah. Just broke the yoke. So then you need to bind him. He, he, he can't do anything until you bind him and curse him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, cast him down to the bottomless pit of hell and loose, I say, the Holy Ghost. Mm. Loose the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah, because you're getting ready to start a great day. So then he said to Moses, I say to you, rise up early in the morning and stand before the enemy. Stand before Pharaoh and say to him, thus said the Lord. There it is. Oh, Satan, the Lord thy God rebukes you. Thus said the Lord of the Hebrews. Oh, somebody, did you know you was a Hebrew? Did you know you was a Jew? Did you know you was an Israelite, a Nazarene? Because our Lord and Savior adopted you, somebody. He says, tell this enemy, let my people go, that they may serve me. See, there it is. When you are free, you need to be free and liberty to serve the one and only true God. That's the first and foremost. That's why I said, tell the devil he is defeated because you now are serving the one and only true God. But indeed, for this purpose, for this purpose, I have raised you up for this purpose. I have raised you up that I may show my power. See, we've been talking about power. See, now God's saying, I can't do that unless you get up, oh, somebody. Rise up and, and begin to rebuke and resist the devil. Hallelujah. Oh, and he shall will and flee from you in the name of Jesus. So you submit yourself to the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Because God can move and speak to you as he's doing right now. So then he says, I have raised up, he says. I have raised up. I have raised, I have raised you up mm. that I may show my power in you. Because in you, there is power. You need to claim the power that God has given you and the authority. He says, again, I say to you, as the scripture read, but indeed for this purpose, I have raised you up, that I may show my power, that's power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Saints, you are an ambassador. You have power and authority. You have been resting on your laurels, but no more. Somebody say, no more me resting on my laurels, Pastor. I can't make it just on these regular little laurels that I've had. I've got to do more. I've got to take chance. I've got to be challenged. I've got to take risk. i got to, oh, i got to step out of my comfort zone. Oh, somebody. I've got to do something. I've got to make something happen. I, I just can't sit still. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, somebody, even the leopard boys could not just sit still. They had to get up. They had two options. They could either go and sit there and go back and die, or they could go forward and face the enemy. And God was always there. We know the story about the, the three leopards. We understand that. They were in a place. Some of you have been in a place, but I'm telling you today, you're coming out. You're coming out because you've been beginning to understand what it is to come out of a situation and how, that's the key, how to come out. Because you have had principles now and ways to do so. You've given power to do so. You've given knowledge, counsel, oh somebody, inspiration, wisdom, oh somebody. God is with you, righteous, God is with you right now in the name of Jesus. So the next thing you need to do then is rebuke the devil in all doubt. Mm. See, I'm giving you these nuggets because it backs up the scripture. Let me say it again. The next thing, first we did the first thing. We told the devil, get thee behind me. We told him that he is defeated in the name of Jesus. See, you're taking authority. You're, you're standing up, oh, like a man. Stand up, Job, hallelujah. Oh, stand up like a man, somebody. Let your spirit man rise right now in the name of Jesus. Here we are. So the next thing to do is to rebuke the devil in all doubt. Oh, somebody. Rebuke the devil in all, I say, not some, but all doubt. Hallelujah. See, notice when you begin to speak these things. What did we say last week about Proverbs? So as a man thinketh, so he is. So as you speak these things, so they are. Oh, somebody, glory to God. Notice what's happening here. Oh, we want you to have what God wants you to have and nothing less. So this is the next thing you do is rebuke the devil. Hallelujah and all doubt. Look at Job. Look what Job did. Since we're talking about Job somewhat, Job 42, 42. We know the story. Verse 1 and 6. Hallelujah. Job told the Lord, I'm vile. I'm undone because he knew. Hallelujah. He had met his match, more than his match, actually, but he bowed himself down and bowed to the Lord, even though Job was a perfect and righteous man, as we know, but he had to step out of his comfort zone. Oh, somebody, look at that. He had to come out of his comfort zone. Job was all a wealthy man, rich man, but he was comforted. He was in a comfort zone, wasn't he? He, didn't have, he wasn't challenged. He was not challenged. God is not going to leave you in a place where you're not challenged. Because why? He, what did he say in the beginning when we started this? He wants to get his power so that the world may know his power. And how does the world know his power? It's through you. So here's Job. Look at verse 1, chapter 42. He says, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything. And there's no purpose of yours you can withheld from you. In other words, there's nothing God can't do. You ask, 
who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, Job said. Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, then, he says, please, and let me speak, oh, somebody. You said, I will question you, and you shall answer me. I heard of you by the hearing of my ear, but now my eyes see, see you. Therefore, I arbor myself and repent in the dust and the ash. Job had to really humble himself because God began to show him things that he knew not of. Job thought he was flowing, but yet God had to show him something that he wasn't all that in the bag of chips. We must understand and remain humble when God blesses us. We must know that God is always going to challenge us in the things of life because this world is temporal. So he wants us to succeed. He wants us to have greater works than his son because it was a dang for us to do so. Job understood this in the end. Then knoweth that this is your time. You know, I like to give you a second to digest some things. Then know that this is your time. Somebody say, this is my time, Pastor. You know, I've been, I've been just getting along and, and things have happened. Because I have taken a stance in life, I, I have changed uh, my thought pattern. I have changed my paradigm in terms of doing things differently now. I'm beginning to believe more, not in God so much as in myself, because I know Jesus now lives in me. So then I can truly have confidence in God because Jesus is inside me. So now when I speak, the Lord speaks because Jesus is inside me. This is the confidence that you have. Then know that this is your time. Ecclesiastics talks about this. Ecclesiastics, we know what it says. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. I said in my heart then, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose, for every work. In other words, this is your time. This is your season. You must have determination now. You must have determination. A desire mixed, as I always say, mixed with emotion, then take it into action which is your faith. Let me say that again. This is your time. This is your season. You must have determination, desire mixed with emotion, and it turns into faith. And remember one thing. You must give a service for whatever it is that you're seeking. Remember, faith without works is dead. So then as we begin to see, we just begin to tie up some loose ends, don't we? Let me look at a story, Daniel. Let me look at a story, Daniel. There were three men that God favored. Daniel was one of those. So then we see that Daniel was a powerful man of God. So then there he was. Look at Daniel then, chapter 6, verse 11. We'll take off there. Because I want you to get this. Because Job and Daniel was people that God admired. So we want to be like these men. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying. Of course, these were evil men. This is Daniel's story. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplications before God. We know the story. Daniel was a praying man. He was one of the ones, the captives of Judah, brought in under the king in Babylon. 
and he was a powerful man, a powerful prophet of God. And God had to what? Test Daniel. Notice Daniel was challenged, and that's what I'm getting at. These men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplications before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the king said, this thing is true. I have done this. But he was persuaded by the enemy. He was beguiled. The, the thing that I have said is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. In other words, he had made a decree, and he couldn't alter it, could not be changed. But they had tricked him into doing so because they were trying to catch Daniel in a pickle. So they answered and said before the king that Daniel, who is the one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regarding for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. In other words, Daniel was going to pray regardless. He had a made-up mind. He had an aim. He had a go. He had a means to an end to see his God. He was going to see the task through that he was ordained to do. So here he was. Here he was doing what he knew he had to do. Saints of God, don't you know that the world don't want you to succeed, but God does? So he has to place a challenge before you so that you can do it. But it's not hard. Daniel proved that. Job proved that. They've already done the hard task. <laughs> They've done the hard task already. God wouldn't task you or test you in that manner. But there are tasks in your own life. What God has for you is for you. So, but these are examples. These patriots oh, are examples of our lives. They're set in stone for our lives. God used them. So therefore, he says, verse 14, and the king now was very sorrowful for what he had done to Daniel because they had made him make this decree against everybody, but they was only trying to capture Daniel. So then, and then the king says, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Notice the king had a heart for Daniel because God had placed a heart in him for Daniel. Notice God will turn the king's heart as the river flowing toward you because why he wants to bless you. We need to understand that God always has someone to, in place to bless you. And that's why he challenges you. He doesn't leave you alone or forsake you. He always gives you help. Just as he did with Jesus when he was carrying the cross, he sent a man to help him complete his task, his challenge, his aim, his goal, his objective to the end. And so the king, again, I say, was grieved about this. So he prayed, obviously, because the word says, until the going down of the sun, he labored. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes, notice, the Medes and the Persians, that no decree or statue which the king established may be changed. So the, the king, I say again, was in a pickle. He was in a dilemma. He could not change what he had written and what he had decreed as a law because he was the king. So the king gave the commandment, and they bought Daniel and cast him into the lion's den. But the king, again, yet still had hope. 
hope the Lord is, saints of God. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your God, your God whom you serve continually, Daniel, he will deliver you. The king knew in his heart that God was with Daniel. So then he went ahead and followed through because why? God was going to what, do what? Receive his glory. In other words, once you set your goals or purpose, the king is going to hold you to it. Oh, somebody, that is so good. Once you set your mind to it, oh, glory to God. Once you make a vow, once you say, I'm going to do thus, thus, and thus, the king, oh, somebody, the king, I say, the king is going to hold you to it. Oh, somebody, the Lord is going to hold you to complete it. He's going to give you help as he did with Daniel in the lion's den. We know the story. But the, the, the fact of the matter is the king held Daniel. Hallelujah. He held him to his goal. He held him to his aim. He held him to his end. Just as God is going for you right now. As you planted and decided that you're going to, oh, do these things to, to, to cause your life to be better. Because we know after Daniel came out of the lion's den, he was lifted up high. He was lifted up. Mark says it this way, but he said to them, let us go into the next town that I may preach. There also, because of this purpose, I come forth. Hallelujah. So I'm preaching today because God wants me to come forth to you. And Romans talks about it like this. And we know that all things work together, work together, for the good of those who love the Lord. See, here's the thing about a goal and an objective. Once you decree and declare that you're going to do this, and remember it requires work. It requires a, a service being rendered. Whatever that service is, it's required of you. So there has to be some work toward that. First you decree it, declare it, put a date on it, and decide when it's going to take place. But then God comes to you and he gives you help to complete it. It doesn't matter about the decision that's made. God is going to oh, help you in the decision you made. Provided it's a decision that is of God. and He knows that it's of a good thing. Because he will hold no good thing from you. So then go forth, dear ones. Go forth, saints. Decree. Declare. Declare a purpose. Declare a vision, declare a mission, a value. Let God move in your life because he's going to get his power from you. Notice he wants the world to see his power through you. And all things, I say all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. So if you truly, I say truly love the Lord, then you have faith. You have faith to believe that it's going to work out for your good. See, as children of the Lamb and the Most High God, we must not concern ourselves with what the world says. Instead, as children of God, we are, we are goal setters and purpose-driven Christian believers. Let me say that again. As children of the Lamb and the Most High, we must not concern ourselves with what the world says. Instead, as children of God, we are goal setters and purpose driven Christian believers. You can take that one to the bank. In addition, we know by setting goals, we've learned that now, we're going to keep our commitment to God and to ourselves. Because God's going to hold it, He's going to. Hold us to it. In, in the next, in, in, isn't that what Daniel did? God held him to it. God could have reached down and said, Daniel, no, I'm not going to let you do this. I, I, I'm just going to stop all of this. No. He wanted Daniel to stand and to believe God all the way through, just as the Hebrew boys did in the furnace. They said, no, we're serving the one and true God. For God I live and for God I die. When you become that 
way with God, then things, I say things, are going to happen for you. Blessings are going to happen for you. So in addition, we know by setting goals, we're going to keep our commitments to God and to ourselves, just as we talked about last week when I talked about the alms to God, to the church, and to yourself. Notice here, the word speaks to this as well. Job 42, 1 and 2, he says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything, and that there's no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. God is doing a mighty work in you. Remember, goals are nothing again but dreams with deadlines. Therefore, whether it's 30 days, as I mentioned over and over and over, 90 days, a year, whatever, write them down. Don't forget to plan your work and plan, plan your work and work your plan. So then you must do this. There's really not an option because you're going to be challenged in it. Finally, remember then, as we always say, we always say because that's who we are. We're Habakians. So I couldn't leave you without repeating the scriptures of Habakkuk because that's who we are. Write the vision down and make it plain on tablets, composition books, notebooks, whatever it is. Write it down. That it, may, that it may run when you read it. It'll fly off the page. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. And but at the end of it, it will speak to you. Oh, somebody. Even a to-do list will speak to you. There's things, I'm telling you the truth. I'll just use me as an There's things I wrote down. And, and, and until I do them, it continues to speak to me. It says, are you going to do this today? Or are you going, is it going to happen today? Uh, here it is. Uh, you, it's not going to go anywhere. Are you going to complete this? So I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm oh, somebody. I'm, I'm assessing somebody. I'm, I'm trying to move cautiously because God's already spoke. So I must do this. I must do it. I, and then I ask God, God, help me figure out a way to complete the task. Notice, simple. And then he gives me the answer to complete it. Because sometimes I even ask, I says, God, if this is not for me, make this escape. If it is for me, show me the way to complete it. Oh, somebody just broke a major yoke. So then therefore, but at the end, it will speak to you. At the end of that period, that sentence, that task is going to speak to you. It will not lie because it's already, it's written. It is written. Though it tarries somewhat, wait for it. But then if you de define and, and, and decree a date and time, then that's the time it will be. Because it will surely come, I say it will surely come to pass. It will not tarry, provided it is dated. Behold, the proud, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But I say to you, dear ones, the just then shall live by faith. That scripture speaks so much, so much volume. It has so much in it. And every time I read it, I realize that there is a mission that I have to go on with God. There's something that I must complete with God. God is not done with you yet or with me because you are Habakkians. Decree it and declare it and walk it out. For God is with you. Finally, dear Finally, Psalms 21 and 4 and 5. May he remember all of your offerings. May he remember all of your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. Salah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire. That's what I wanted to, to say to you. May the Lord grant you your heart's desire. The word says he will hold no good thing from you. And now he says, may he grant you according to your heart's desire. What's in your heart? So a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. What's in your heart? What's in your wallet? 
what's in your heart. And may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill your purpose, your tasks, your goals to complete them. We will rejoice in your salvation then. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all of your petitions. God bless you, saints of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Because God, I say, is with you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you so much. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now that the saints of God be blessed by this word and they now have an even a better and a clear level of understanding of, as to what they must do. And Lord, let them always use the word to back up what your man of God has said. And Lord, I thank you for it in the name of Jesus and Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hallelujah.